Hi everybody, welcome back to Oliver Smith Watches. I am George, this is Ryan, and today we've got an interesting subject. Um, Every morning when we get into work, uh, I look at a couple websites. Uh, I want to stay relevant. I want to see what's new out there. And there's some good articles as well. Based on one of those, we're going to talk today about what we would do with $100,000. Okay, so before we get started, uh, if you are anywhere in the Scottsdale area, please stop in. One, we'd love to meet you. Two, if you're a watch guy, that's what we do really, really well. Uh, Pre-owned, new, uh, talking watches, uh, that's what we're here for, and we'd love to actually like meet you personally. Uh, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. Okay, let's get into it. You find yourself in New York, you're walking down 47th Street, you've got $100,000 burning a hole in your pocket. What are you looking for? What are you gonna buy? C8 Corvette with a Batman <laughs> Rolex. Uh, no, I'm just joking. So honestly, what I would what I would buy would be a 15 400 white dial. Uh, you uh, actually uh, Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 15, Audemars, 15 yeah. 400. Yep. He's actually the one that actually made me fall in love with that watch. He used to have a 15 300 white yep. dial. I really like the dial on that watch because it, is it white? Is it silver? It kind of plays this like little trick with you. The bracelet's phenomenal. It I mean, adapts you, and becomes whatever you need it to become. Exactly. Yeah, it could really be a dress watch. watch when you need it to be. It could be a sport watch, what, it, what it's kind of used for, right? Yeah. Um, I just love the adaptability of that watch, and you could just use it in any scenario. So um, I also want to preface this. We're, we're going to be talking about secondary market retails because I, I feel yes. like, and it's, so, it's funny, Ryan and I have not discussed this yet, what our watches are going to be, but um, we both realized even 20 years in, neither one of us can get any of this stuff at retail. No. So we're going to be talking <laughs> about secondary market value. So yes. And that watch secondary market is about 33 to $34,000. Um, so that gives me quite a bit of room to spend on something else as well. Mm -hmm. And my next one's going to be another part of the Holy Trinity. Patek Philippe Aquanaut 5167A uh, or 1A, if you guys want to get super technical. That's going to take up a lot of room in your house. That takes up a lot of room. That's a $49,000 watch right now uh, in the secondary market. Yep. Uh, love the rubber band on it. Uh, it's just one of those watches. That I've Everybody goes left towards the Nautilus. I went right and, and kind of went the opposite. Well, and, and it's funny too, because I think for, for a, a period of time, the Aquanaut got really hot because you couldn't get a Nautilus. Right. No, it, it, it was your only like, like, like viable option. And now now it's really standing on its own. Yeah. I mean, that the, particularly the Aquanaut, like, like Chrono Travel Time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, forget oh about gosh, it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, unobtainium. And, and you know, <laughs> at retail, I mean, it's a great price point. It's like twenty two thousand, yeah. twenty one thousand, somewhere in that price. If, point. if you're that lucky, if guy, you can get, get that, one. Yeah. But you know, yeah. forty nine thousand. If I had a hundred grand, yeah. I would definitely blow it on that. Okay. Um, so my next one is going to be the last part of the Holy Trinity, uh -huh. uh, which is a Vacheron, but probably not the one you're thinking. Oh, I know, I know where you're going. I know where you're going with this Vacheron fifty six. Yeah. Vacheron yep. 56 in the blue dial. In the blue dial, yeah. It's just a phenomenal watch. And I'm not Total really, sleeper. Yeah, that's, I'm, that's I don't awesome. know if you guys have yep. noticed in all the videos, I'm not really a dress watch guy, but that watch does something for me. And it's it, funny, we had one in briefly, and I saw that look in your eye. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> almost bought it, like, to be honest with you. At $11,000 pre-owned. That's insane. It's not a bad price yeah, point. No, no, it's Especially when you can get a Vacheron for that under 15 grand. That's yeah. insane. And my last but not least... You, you actually, still have room? You I still, still have room? room. I have six grand left. I have six thousand dollars. Okay, okay, left. okay, fair. There fair. should be a total right here <laughs> <laughs> that Abiel puts up for us. But no, so my last one is actually going to be a Jaeger LeColt Reverso Squadra which is the slightly bigger um, Squadra. <laughs> actually, our manager right downstairs, Bill Eccles, he actually has that watch probably on today. So you'd be doing the Squadra travel time? I would not, be, or yeah, the travel time, yes. yes not, not, not the chrono. Not the chrono, okay. the travel time. And the reason being, I'm a huge Batman fan. I don't know if you can tell the cufflinks there. That is actually the original Batmobile. And it is actually the unofficial watch of Batman. It so is. So Val is. Kilmer, George Clooney, yep. Christian Bale, a lot of these guys actually wore the duality the of Bruce Wayne. Correct. Yeah, the duality yeah. of the character, Bruce Bruce Wayne, Batman. There Bruce actually King. is a story for another time of them doing a Batman reverso, but they didn't have the rights to use. That the was Kilmer. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. correct. But yeah, that actually completes exactly. Wow. Okay. So, um, so I found out about this last night, and and, and literally just started thinking about it this morning. Um, but it, these are things we kind of always think about. Maybe not with with the monetary uh, uh, label put on it, but 
you know, only three watches for the rest of your life, what would they be kind of right, thing. Right. And it's funny because I am going to play on you. I want my 15300 back. I, 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 I figured that. I so figured that. Audemars Piguet, uh, Royal Oak 15300, um, I think it's one of the best watches AP ever made. And, and initially... When I owned it for the first time, it was literally because I couldn't afford a 15202. I mean, th th that's just how yep. that is. But I'm um, now having owned it, man, I like that watch. It's just really, it's really so well good. done. Um, in house movement, seconds hand, screw down crown. It has the few things that I think the 202 might be missing other than the rarity. Right. So um, that would start mine. Go ahead and call that. 37,000, 36,000, something like that in the secondary markets right now. Um, moving forward, uh, I'm going to do something a little bit offbeat that you might not even think of, um, for, for me at least, but um, a Rolex Daytona, but a black Patrizzi dial. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ste um, steel bezel. Yep. Steel bezel, yep. yeah. kind of the old school, um, but a specific amount of rarity. Um, a good friend of ours has um, probably the best Patrizzi doll I've ever seen. Oh, and every time he wears exactly it, in, yep. it's um, it's spectacular. Uh, I really, really like that watch, and I think it would fill a couple of holes into that sport watch into having a chronograph, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, I think it would just check a lot of boxes for me. And, and that's a very you watch, too. Yeah, I, remember, I'm, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a guy that specifically <laughs> bought a BMW <laughs> with some patina on it. And by patina, I mean <laughs> the paint coming off a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, that's the that's the All your, mechanical, that's your style. You kind of no, like no that. electric seats. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. Um, so that I'm going to go ahead and call that thirty. I think that's going to vary a little bit on. So, right, so, yeah. so call my me 20s. in my mid sixties. It's the third one that's getting me. It's the third one that's getting me, and um, I feel a need for a dress watch. Um, I love Paddock's new um, white gold Calatrava. We have one in the case yeah, right yeah. now. That new forty millimeter, that's absolutely great. spectacular. Great dial. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah great the great dial. dial. Really, really good watch, but I think my new love affair, um, it would have to be the Moritz Grossman. Um, the Moritz Grossman yeah. Central Seconds, yeah. um, but in a specific dial variant that we'll talk about later. But I think that would fill that dress watch yeah. space really well, and it's going to be just sub 30000 So I'm going to go ahead and call that my 100000 with tax. With tax. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, I think I'm close enough there to make the argument. Throw a moon swatch here and there. Well, and I, yeah. But I do like your like, the complete moon swatch selection and, yeah. and, 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 and a mid-level mid Porsche or something. You know, I, I can make that work, too. So um, now that you know what we would pick, we want to hear from you. Um, it doesn't have to be just three watches, four watches. Yeah, uh, one watch. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. That, that's a lot to wear. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, we'd love to have you comment below and uh, tell us what you think. Uh, yeah. Either way, thanks for watching, and uh, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.